Hello friends and welcome to my Lost Judgment Q&A slash review. But first a few disclaimers, I know they're not fun, but they need to be said. Number one, thank you Sega for the review code. Sega provided me with a code for Lost Judgment, which means that I did not pay any of my money to access this game. And number two, I have not finished Lost Judgment. I'm about 30 hours in, which is kind of a miracle in itself, considering I'm trying to take care of a four month old. Uh, and if I had to estimate, I would say I'm probably like 60 to 65% of the way through the main narrative. I've been spending a lot, a lot, a lot of time in the side quests and kind of like diving into those and getting a feel for how those work and run. And oh my God, they're so much fun. So I just wanted to throw that out there because transparency is the best. Honesty is the best policy. Okay, let's go. Question time. Ah. So the first question I want to take is from Emmett Watkins Jr. Because I think this is one that a lot of folks have. And Emmett's question is, should I play the first judgment or can I just jump in? And do you see it being in game of the year talks? So no, you do definitely do not need to play the first judgment to enjoy lost judgment. However, I would say if you are not in a rush to play this game, you should absolutely play the first judgment. It's on Xbox and PlayStation Network for $39.99. And it is a fantastic game fantastic game but going back to lost judgment uh you can definitely hop in right away i think if you have played judgment you're going to get a real kick out of some of the reoccurring characters some of the side quests some of the nods and a bonus if you've played yakuza like a dragon you're also going to get some fun little like nods here and there but again like totally not necessary you do not have to have played the first as far as game of the year talks go I will say I think this is my favorite game of the year that I've played so far and that is with Resident Evil Village and I think I'm enjoying my time with Lost Judgment just a little bit more um, but obviously like I enjoy both games for different reasons because they're both very very good games and very very different games anyway I digress uh, I don't and this is the shitty thing I don't think that Judgment and even like Yakuza to some extent they're not, I don't want to say mainstream, but they're not like popular enough to win these awards that I think they are 100% deserving of. I mean, don't get me wrong. These games do incredibly well and they sell millions of units. And I think we're going to get to a point eventually where people are going to see the word Yakuza or Judgment and their ears are going to perk up and they're going to know to expect nothing but greatness. And like, listen, the folks who have been playing these games, we know what to expect. We know that team is beyond brilliant, but, um, I think this game is definitely worthy of Game of the Year nominations, and it should be in Game of the Year discussions, but uh, historically, I just feel like these titles haven't been a part of those discussions, and that makes me sad, but hopefully that'll change. The next question comes from Inside the Bunker. How does it compare to the First Judgment and the Yakuza, Yakuza, I can't talk, and the Yakuza series as a whole. The first judgment to me anyway felt very much like a Yakuza spinoff. You know, be, being that it took place in Kamurocho and you have like the same brawlery type combat with like these detective light mechanics. But with Lost Judgment, I feel like this game very much stands on its own legs and that could have to do and I'll go into more details about this in the later question but I think the narrative is much darker I think you have a lot more empathy for some of the victims in this in this game because you know it's not like they're all Yakuza and they kind of signed up for this criminal lifestyle oh my god I'm shedding um I said shedding not shitting I don't know how that's going to come across on the microphone but I want to make that very clear if I was shitting my face would be red it would be all weird I forgot what I was talking about Oh yeah, so like the, the characters in this game, you know, they didn't necessarily sign up for that Yakuza lifestyle. So when something bad happens to some of them, you're like, oh shit, <laughs> like that fucking sucks. And um, it really expands on the detective mechanics and it doesn't lean too heavily into some of those old mechanics that we were all kind of sick of, like the tailing and the, or the trailing or whatever you want to call it. I kind of like tailing. I think that's better. I guess you could call it either or. Anyway, I'm getting distracted here. Um, and there's a lot more side quests in this game, a lot more things you can kind of lose yourself in that were never in any other Yakuza game. So um, I would say it's much more expanded and it feels much different. And this goes into the next question um, from Jay Barry? Barry? And Jay's question is, how did they expand the world from the first game? So obviously you have Kamurocho, you have Yokohama that you're spending a lot of time in. And Yokohama is freaking huge. And Kamurocho is still like good size, but they definitely kind of like, I feel like scaled back some of the locations you can visit. Um, but now you have this 
big old high school. And this big old high school is like its own little ecosystem of characters and side quests and mysteries to solve and narrative. And it's it's a really fun place to spend your time. And like I said at the top of this, I'm, I'm finding myself doing a lot of school stories and school missions and I love the main narrative so far, but those main missions, I mean, sorry, those school missions are like top notch. They're really fun. Epic Open World wants to know, how much is the second game reliant on tailing missions? It's 2021, people are over these kinds of missions. And I agree with you, the tailing missions in the first judgment were pretty obnoxious. And the 35, 30 hours, sorry, 30 hours, I've been playing this, I've done maybe three to four tailing missions and they've never lasted too long. There's a new interesting like act distracted mechanic where Yagami might like pull out his cell phone. So if the person you're tailing turns around and looks at you, you know, you can just push Y. You don't have to like scramble to hide behind something. Now grand, like you do have a meter that slowly ticks down and the person you're tailing does have a meter that slowly ticks up as they become more and more aware of you. It hasn't been anything obnoxious. It's been fairly easy and there have not been too many of them. So Good job, RGG. You listen to the feedback. Thank you. My Beats Brown wants to know, how have they improved upon the detective mode from the first game? So this is fun. They've uh, really done quite a bit to make it stand apart from the first judgment, which, you know, it had its observation mode. It had tailing. Um, I feel like that was kind of more or less the gist of it. Sometimes you'd use the drone to go like peep into windows and whatnot. So in Lost Judgment, you have a whole bunch of gadgets at your disposal. You have your camera, which is more or less the same for the first judgment. You have now what's called a signal detector, which can pick up like noise jammers or I don't know what they're called, but basically something that jams signals. And you use your signal detector to figure out where it's coming from and how it works. It's like a little radio and an antenna and it has bars on it. And the bars fill as you get closer to whatever, whatever's causing it. Maybe it's something hidden in a locker or maybe it's something in a trash bag on the streets of Yokohama or Kamurocho. And it, it's kind of like hot and cold. Think of it that way. It's a game of hot and cold. Um, you also have something called a noise amp, which helps you detect noise coming from a particular location. Um, it's not incredibly exciting and fun. I think the signal detector is more fun, but it's just another thing you can use. You have your drone, of course, and you have a dog. You have a Shiba friend. And that doggy is good for sniffing out scents and following scents. And he's very, very cute. And you can take him for walks and he'll gather items for you. So fucking, fucking cute. Um, there's also a parkour system now in place. And I say like a parkour system. It, I've used it maybe like five times uh, so far. And essentially you just walk up to something. You, well, I'm playing on Xbox. Be up to scale pipes. You have a stamina meter. Pretty self-explanatory if you've played a game. It's nothing you have to use often, but it's there. And then there's also a sneaking stealth system where you can walk up behind enemies and choke them or throw coins to distract them and waltz by them. It's not something that you can just activate at any given time. It's more of something like, okay, you're going into this hideout. You are now going to be in stealth mode. Good luck. So there's a lot there and this is one of the reasons why I think it feels so different from The Last Judgment and why it feels so much more of a so much more than just a Yakuza spin-off. I feel like Lost Judgment is now 100% its own thing, which is really great. I think it's awesome that RGG is able to expand and try out new mechanics. Not all of them are like incredibly fun to play with. I think the parkour system it's it's fine, but it's nothing like you know, I would have just preferred like a scaling, like, or like a, not a scaling, but like just push B to, to hop over this thing. But it is what it is. And it's, uh, for the most part, it diversifies, all these mechanics diversify the gameplay enough where it feels more detective-y than anything. And it's awesome. Jacob Roundy wants to know, what's your favorite new mini game? I'm really excited about the dancing and boxing in particular. Oh man, there are so, there's so much and friends when I say I don't know if I've ever like played a game that has so much good extra side content like don't throw Skyrim in my face that doesn't count this is like it it is amazing that there's all of this different shit you can do in this game but it's all so fun and it each has its own progression system and own narrative and okay I'll just, I'll just get into it okay so you have your main narrative, you have your side quests. Like, okay, cool. 
those aren't mini games, but I'm throwing that out there. But besides those, you also have these school stories. And now there are all these clubs within this school. I think there's 10 total. I've unlocked four or five. I have robotics club. I have skateboarding. I have the mystery club. I have dancing and I have boxing. I think I, I think I, I think I nailed that. Um, and each one of these clubs has, again, its own narrative associated with it, where maybe there's a student who needs help, or maybe there's a mysterious nemesis that's tying all these groups together, which is like kind of part of it. But besides like the over, besides like the, the thread that's tying all these together, each one has its own character, its own struggle. And again, like this progression system in each mini game, it's so much fun. I personally love the skateboarding because you get to skate around this park and you get to perform tricks and you can race your skateboard and you can upgrade your skateboard. And then you have boxing. And let me just tell you, friends, like I have never been one who's enjoyed boxing games. I've never been one who's enjoyed skateboarding or anything like that. But I'm having so much fun with these because they make them just like simple enough or you can really like deep dive into it that they're fun and they don't feel like they're incredibly incredibly difficult. Disclaimer, depending on the difficulty you're on, that can also affect some of the mini games and some of the, some of the, um, what am I trying to say? Some of the bonuses that you get when you play. Hope that makes sense. I'm just getting really excited. Anywho, so like if you're playing like a drone race and you're on simple mode, which is the easiest mode, I think you don't have to worry about your drone's health getting depleted. Pretty sure that's correct. Anywho, so when it comes to boxing, I want to go back to the boxing mini game. It's so fun. It is so fun. So you have like your jab, your uppercut, your like, I think it's like called the hook move. And when you're doing those button prompts, you can push up and down on the stick, depending if you want to do like a hit for the head or hit for the stomach or hit for like the chest. There's a blocking, there's like weaving, and you can pay to upgrade your ability, not upgrade your ability. Well, yeah, you can pay to learn new abilities. So it's kind of like its own little leveling system, kind of like with the fighting techniques. Um, you can spar against like, oh, I don't know, it's at least 20 different enemies. And each time you spar against someone, you gain XP and like your health and your stamina and your like hit and defense, I think all like level up. And then you're gradually like fighting stronger and stronger opponents. Like it's just so much fun. And like even the robotics where you have to like build and customize all these robots and do like these fun, like tactical scrimmages, like they took the time is what I'm saying. RGG fucking took the time to make each one of these mini games so much fun. And then you have the dancing club, which is like a rock band slash guitar hero button prompt shenaniganry. It is just, oh, now you probably can see why I'm spending all of my time like deep diving into these side quests. They're just so much fucking fun. So that's just the school stories though. And like, that's only like half of them. So you obviously have, um, your drone racing is back. There's Hama of the Dead, which is like, you know, the, um, oh my God. I'm not even going to tell you how long it took me to remember House of the Dead. Oh boy, my brain is fried. So anyway, yeah, your drone racing is back. You have Hama of the Dead. And of course you have all the Sega um, arcades there where you can do all the fun little mini games and UFO catchers. And then you kind of have this little like scavenger hunt throughout Kamurocho and Yokohama where you're looking for squirrel graffiti art. And when you find one, it'll kind of direct you what you need to do to locate a nearby hidden item. And that's actually, it's a really fun one. It's a really fun little mini game. I'll just be uh, on my skateboard, which by the way, Yagami can skate throughout the streets now and he gets by a lot, lot quicker. And I'll just see one on the off like in my peripheral vision. And then I scan it and I get a cool new move set or maybe I get a rare item or something and I keep going. There's like 50 something in this game. There is just so much. There's something called a, a got a buzz, a buzzword researcher or a, God, what's it called? Um, I, I wrote it down because I had a feeling I was going to forget a buzz researcher. And it's an app on Yagami's phone that looks for, for specific keywords. And let's say that keyword is noise. And it'll show you on the map where everyone's talking about noise on Buzz Researcher. It's kind of like Twitter. You head to that area on the map and you try to find out where that chit chatter is coming from. There's some really fun side quests that you can discover that way. There is just so, so much to do. I have even gotten into like some of the other smaller things you can do. Like there's a video game that you can like get good at on the side. And it's kind of this whole sub story where you, there's like microtransactions, but like with actual in-game money, not like actual money. So it's kind of like a tongue in cheek thing. Anyway, I'm rambling, but holy shit, you guys, it is just so good. 
Key Lock MVP wants to know, has the combat evolved any? Yeah, like definitely. So you obviously have Tiger, you have Crane, which is like Tiger is your more like one-on-one combat. Crane is more you're taking on groups of enemies and Snake is the new mode. And think of this as you're using the enemy's momentum and energy against them. It's very it's very heavily based on counterattacks and there's some fun moves in there. I find myself mostly using Tiger because I like feeling like a big beefy Yagami. Um, I don't really use Crane or Snake that much. But there is that. And then obviously boxing is going to be the fourth type introduced, I believe, with some um, a, an upcoming DLC or upcoming patch, I think, in the coming months or maybe even early next year. Not entirely sure. W. Bender wants to know, how is the English acting? And this ties into Josh's question, which is sub or dub? So the first time I played Judgment was with English voice acting and the English voice actors do a phenomenal job. And as you may or may not know, I am studying Japanese. So on my second playthrough of Lost Ju oh, Jesus, on Judgment, I played in Japanese and also phenomenal, very well done. So I would say it just depends on like what you like. You can't go wrong either way really. And if you enjoyed the English acting of Judgment, most of those actors have come back to return to their characters. Like Greg Chun is Yagami again, and he is just brilliant. So I would say whatever floats your boat. You think you can switch between the two if you want to see what you really like. But either way, like you can't, you can't go wrong. Epic Iceman wants to know, what is your favorite wacky side quest you discovered while playing? So there are some returning characters who come back and... They're like, hey, this is what I've been up to. I'm in a pickle. Help me. And then Yagami has to help them like unpickle themselves. And there's this particular quest with our favorite uh, ninja. I'll just leave it there. That one was so fucking funny. I mean, I, I just love that character so much. And then there's one that involves um, a robbery and a certain fruit mascot. I'll just leave it at that. It's always going to be a mystery to me and I can never quite articulate how fucking fascinating it is that you can have such a dark mature stressful ass narrative but then have some of the funniest fucking shit happen on the side quest but it works it works it's that RDG magic clockwork raptor wants to know are there a lot of shirtless scenes you know I don't think I don't think I've seen any titties in this game male or female it's definitely not like the Yakuza, like, I'm going to rip my shirt off somehow. And, well, here's my man titties. That's not, that's not this game. It's not that vibe. Um, I don't think I've seen any shirtless. I don't think I've seen any bare torsos in my 30 hours or so of gaming. Hmm. Well, anyway, friends, I feel like this video has probably gone on long enough. I hope I answered your questions. I hope my enthusiasm for this game has shown through in this video because, my God, it is so much fun. And just to reiterate, like... It, it's, it plays fantastic. It looks fantastic. But like where this game just really shines is again that RGG magic of having a very intense main narrative. But then pairing it off with like these random wacky side quests that just make you go like how is this happening? The quests that make you laugh out loud. And if you have played the first judgment you're going to get a real kick out of some of these returning characters. And seeing what they've been up to. And if you played like a dragon it's going to be a blast for you to revisit Yokohama through a whole nother lens. And I just am in love with this game and I am 100% dedicated to just taking my sweet time with it. I want to continue doing all the mini games. I want to see them from start to finish. I want to see them to the very end. I want to catch all the things in the UFO catchers. I want to do all the side quests. And going back to the narrative, like it, it's a real head scratcher and it really does make you think about like where where is this going? Like who who's the bad guy or like how could this have possibly happened or these clues don't add up? And I find myself deep diving into the case files a lot to like see if I can find any inconsistencies um, and kind of like piece together what's happening in the narrative because it's, it's a really good one and uh, lots of twists and turns and we get to see different sides of Yagami and Co and um, it's just everything I would want from a Judgment sequel. It's just like absolutely everything I would want and it's such a good, such a good time right now and it's a really comforting, <laughs> here I go, I'm going to nerd out for a bit. But it's such a comforting comforting feeling knowing that I have this game and I still have so many more hours of it to go. Um, especially like right now when it's like, again, I got a newborn at home and it's hard to play games. It's hard to find the time. But I always know I can pick up the controller and do a side 
a side story or maybe I, I can do a few tricks in the skate park or I can work on my robots or I can work on like my boxing skills or I can advance the main narrative or I can fly my drone and do a drone race or I can hit the arcade. There's just so much to do and I love it and I just truly plan on not really even bothering with too many other games because this is like literally all I need right now. It's just bringing me so much joy and happiness. All right, friends, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have any more questions for me about Lost Judgment, do not hesitate to leave them in the comments. I will answer what I will, but obviously I'm not gonna be spoiling anything because like that would be really shitty. But thank you again so much for watching and I will see you in the comments. I'll see your words in the comments. I'm butchering this. <laughs> Goodbye.